was popping was popping was popping welcome nikki and moose i'm nikki that's moose what's up moose what up y'all and moose is gonna do the intro today i don't know listen moose here you listen. go very, very special episode very, very special episode we're gonna remix this whole thing together let me tell you let me tell you what we got in store for y'all today man um the person we're gonna be talking about is a global brand creator with billions of impressions accumulated worldwide this this person is helping your favorite influencers stay relevant online and has helped them to grow billions of followers uh we're talking about the queen of content and branding folks we're talking about you want to tell them who we're talking about i guess we're talking about me <laughs> <laughs> I guess listen well. man listen we uh we did uh one of the members last week i said oh if we're gonna do me then we most definitely have to give them the backstory on how you became you so Y'all tap in, man. This is going to be a, an incredible episode. Let's get into this intro and get Two to it. Two kids from Queens, cut from a different cloth. Now, joining forces, helping you to elevate your personal brand. Yeah, I'm talking about Nikki and Moose, bringing you a never-before-seen perspective into the mindset, the mentality, the behaviors, the driving force, but more importantly, the stories behind the people and brands that you know and love the most. And you already know what we're about to do. This episode is powered by Ecamm Live, the number one all-in-one streaming platform that not only lets you to stream on multiple platforms, so that's Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, everything that you want to do, but it also helps you on your pre-recording. So it does video isolation, audio isolation, text, transitions, you name it, you could do it. And we're giving away 14 days for free. Okay, 14 days for free if you go to www.nickyandmoose.com slash ecamm. That's E-C-A-M-M -M, and get your 14-day trial on us. I love it. I love it. Um, how you feeling, well, how you feeling Nick? Oh, oh, you, uh, oh, oh. you, you for oh. real want to switch oh. this whole thing up. Okay. I was just like, let me just, let me just go ahead and, uh, huh. Okay. Um, uh, well. All right. You got it. You got it. Look, I'm, I'm good. Oh, okay. I'm Gucci. Um, what's <laughs> happening? What's What happened this week? Uh, taxes. Mm. taxes. I just got a couple. Yeah. Um, this is all I'll say about this. People, uh, talk on a regular to your accountant. Don't mm -hmm. talk around the time of taxes, talk on a regular because it will catch you with a right hook thinking that things were taken care of and it wasn't, okay? It wasn't mm. if you are not talking on a regular and the only fault it's going to be is yours. So That's right. um, I'm not going to get too much into detail, but yeah, I was not. <laughs> I was happy last year. I was like, oh, mm. we're good. We're great. It's okay. This year, I want to go back to uh, one W two mm. and uh, the little thing that I get for owning a crib. That's all I want to go back to. Sometimes life was so much easier, <laughs> so Man. much easier. Um, Listen, yeah, no, wow. <laughs> no. For for everyone who is having similar sentiment to Nikki, um, I was. I've definitely felt that emotion, by the way. And I think you and I have had this conversation where I talked about like the seriousness of tax season. Matter of fact, we did a live about tax season, I believe, or something related to taxes. Mm -hmm. uh, and we talked about that. But do yourselves a favor, get the book, Tax-Free Wealth, mm. right? I think the Tom, I forget the guy's last name, the author. Tax-Free Wealth, super important. That book is going to teach you Get the book. I'm not even going to tell you right now. That, just that because deep, dramatic pause you just did. Because <laughs> you know why? I'm just like, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to take away from the episode. But no, nah, man, it's, it's, it's taxes are so important, especially for entrepreneurs. 
And we think that accountants are going to be our lifesavers, mm -hmm. but uh, that book shows you how you really are the one in control. And the minute you just know how to move and navigate that system, it's a totally different experience. And so my life changed a couple of years ago once I started to say, hold up. I'm taking control of this. I'm not going to let you. Granted, you're the one CPA the whole nine, but I got to, I, I, you provide the facts. So. Oh, listen, um, with the. Yeah. The, the way they say AI is about to re uh, replace these tax uh, preps and all that stuff. So listen, mm -hmm. I'm excited mm -hmm. about that. I'm excited 100%. about that. A hundred percent. Because I don't well, know what I don't know and it's kicking my butt now. I mean, yes. it's kicking my butt. Yeah. Yeah, now you, I feel like every entrepreneur has to take a couple of those seasons before oh, they. Oh, man. Yeah, no, this one like, was oh, like. Now I know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now no, no, I no. Know. This one was. Oh, what? Yeah. That's I, tough. But I only have. Oh, okay. We're going to make this work. Hello. Text. You've always been a good a good citizen, though. Like, literally. Like, you're, you're literally a good citizen in a sense. Like, you're like, all right, fine. I'll just pay it all at once. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I mean, like, uh, 12 payments. Oh, uh, see, can you I, extend it to 112? I'm, yeah, no, I, 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 I had to ask about that this time. <laughs> and, and, and the person was like, because it was that bad. It was that bad wow. that I was like, hold on. Okay. Can we talk about payments? Like, yeah, but you're mm. going to get hit with penalties. I was like, hold on. You told me the past two years, Hey, you want to do payments? I said, no, now I'm asking for payments. And you're saying, mm. nah, you're going to hit with penalties. So last year I wasn't going to hit with penalties. What are we talking about? What are we doing here? So whatever. Tax season is over. Praise God. Um, I'm just going to breathe easy and just try to learn something every month because, geez. Um, mm. Yeah. No, but that means good things are going to happen. This Good yeah. things are going to happen. Yeah. No, indeed. I hate to be the stifler in every conversation when I've been like, hey, um, so if this we do it this way, this way for that thing, when tax season comes around, these are some of the pros and cons. So, yeah. Um, yeah. All right. All right. Well, hey, listen, man, I am I'm doing I'm doing good. Okay. I'm a little hungry today at the time in which we're recording this. You know, it's just, it's, you know, it's that time of the day. So so. <laughs> We, we so he's are, looking, we he's, he's grateful that we, we don't have to talk to him too much today. <laughs> right, right, right. This is a great, this is a great day. I get to play a, a different role, but now nah, let's get into this, man. I'm, I'm really excited. You know, uh, we really wouldn't be doing any of this if it wasn't for Nix to begin with. And I know she says that she's a very public person and she's a very private public person because mm -hmm. she's the type to say anything if you ask her. Yes. But. I still believe that people need to know how, like, the backstory came together, right? And the backstory, I'm talking about from the upbringing. So, look, you hear her all the time say it. I'm just a kid from Queens, right? It's on our intro. Um, we're both from Queens. But it's such a, a response that you always use to show, like, how humble you are, which is true. you super humble person. But tell us about your upbringing and what life was like for you in Queens. Um, well, that's simple. Only child. Uh, I think we were, we moved to Queens, when I think I was like five or something, right? And we lived in Manhattan first. Uh, and then we moved to Queens. I was like, I was small. I know that much. And uh, went to Catholic school all my life, right? Catholic school all my life. Uh, and so I believed in snowstorms and still going to school. Um, which is completely different than where I live now. Uh, basketball, three, four teams in a row. Shout out to my mom for that. Uh, Jewish camp, right? Shout out to 92nd mm. Street. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, whitewater rafting, Hershey Park. Like, I had a really good childhood. I ain't going to lie. I had a very, very good childhood. Um, and... Yeah, that's it. I, mean, I had a very good childhood. I don't know, wow. know what else you try wow. to go with that. You know, yeah, you're not asking classic, me specific. Though, Hershey Park, <laughs> Hershey Park is uh, is uh, is definitely a, that was a New York thing for a minute. It's like mm -hmm. you either going to Split Splash, Hershey Park, uh, Six Flags came a little later, but I I do remember that. 
Six um, Flags was the GOAT. But I didn't know that you were actually born in Manhattan first or <laughs> lived in Manhattan first. I didn't know that. I thought you was just like Queens through and through. Oh, no, 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 no. I was born in Manhattan. Uh, and then we moved because it was a it was a one bedroom. Like, my mom didn't plan on having me. I mean, mm. didn't plan. I was a, my mom had me late 30s. No, early 30s. And, you know, back then that was that was late. Now that seems early in in society. Mm-hmm. Like, shout out to Jan Jackson. She had a baby at 50. You know, the brats <laughs> having a baby at 38. So, you know, early 30s is was late back then. So they didn't plan on having me. So when they did, they were like, oh, snap, we got to got to kind of move. Hold on. Let's uh mm. so we moved to Elmhurst Queens uh which I always say we live in a very gated house. If you've been to my around my neighborhood we're the only ones that have like this huge gate with mm-hmm. lights little chandeliers. Whole vibe. So I no, I did not live in no ghetto. I didn't I was, I was, I was chilling. I was chilling. You moved to you moved to the best borough at the age of five. That's good. That's I see good. That. I see what you did there. That was good. You know, it's it's important. But That's listen, good. it's um it's difficult to see beyond or miss your passion for sneakers, fashion, music, right? Um, how did you get introduced to each of these like cultural phenomenons, and how have those things influenced you today? Like, who introduced you to sneakers, music, fashion? Is that... That's all my mom. Yeah, that's all really? my mom. Um, Well, like I said, I, I played basketball when I was young. And so if you played basketball, you want to have Jordans. Uh, I wanted all of them. I couldn't get all of them. So I said when I was able to get all of them, I was going to get all of them. So that's exactly what happened. Of course, the uh, addictive mindset and the OD type of vibes that I have, uh, I OD'd and got too many Jordans at a certain point. So, you know, but it is what it is. Music, my mom uh, always put me in front of the TV, in front of VH1 and MTV, right? I was always watching music videos. Uh, Still one of my favorite, like, beginning memories is seeing a Prince video. And then this one, oh, man. Isaiah, if you could find it, there was there was a song. It was like that that song. The video was so fire. I don't remember what the song was, but the video was so fire, and that's what I remember always seeing. And my mom always played music and still plays music to this day in the crib. And so sneakers and music have always been thing. Fashion, I've been very simple. Like I'm I'm. I'm cool on fa- fashion. I'm just more of a sneaker and a hat person. Really? Mm-hmm. You, you flex on over time, time though, like low keys going. One pull time, up with a, one time for the one time when I have to. Yeah, like, yeah, you you gonna show them like, and I, you know, uh, well, be careful. Yeah. Well, I mean, here's the thing. Shout out to uh, <laughs> social media. I get a lot of things right. as gifts, and so I try to wear what people give me. I'm not one of those people that are just like. Oh, thank you, thank you, and then put them all in a in a bundle somewhere. No, I try to wear what the what that is, and so sometimes it's great, sometimes it's not. Something, I, mm-hmm. but I'm gonna wear it because I'm appreciative of what people give me. So, yeah. Is that your love language? Like, are gifts your love gifts? language? If- mm, no, it used to be. Mm. Used to be. Interesting. Okay? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. You would think, but uh, it used to. I be. I would think so. Yeah. Well, I mean, being an only child, I'm. Nine out of ten times, the way that I was raised, uh, gifts was my uh, love language. Now it is quality time. Mm. Mm-hmm. Sit down and talk to her. Okay, yeah, talk okay, to me nice. Yeah, yeah like, come on, is, stop playing. This is why I love okay. being on Facetime and stuff like that. Yeah, talk to me. Like, spend time with me. Thanks. Yeah, I love it. I love it. That is such an only child thing for sure. Like, wait, you don't want to hang out with me? You don't want to sit here yeah, and talk, talk to, to me? me? You don't want to talk to me? What's, what's the sneaker count at now? Uh, last last you told me, I'm, no, I don't, I'm, I'm not even going to guess. What, what's the sneaker count at now? What is it it's up to? It's over 200. I had stopped mm. over 200. I, I stopped counting. I'm not going wow. to keep, continue. 
Just over two. What was the last purchase? What's the last? What's the last thing you got? Hmm. Last week. Week before that. <laughs> <laughs> I. I stopped buying. Like, I'm, I don't even no, 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 buy sneakers okay. anymore. So, hold on, hold on. No, let's let's but, have that conversation. I bought one last week. <laughs> okay. No, 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 no. I didn't say I stopped buying. I didn't, I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't no, say no, that. I'm joking. I but slowed yeah, down yeah. a lot. So, okay, there was a point okay. where I was buying every single Saturday. Jordan normally drops 10 a.m. every Saturday or every other Saturday. It depends, right? I used to be that one that was buying three, four pairs a month. A month. Now wow. it's, I would say, let's say six the most a year. The mm -hmm. most a year. Wow. That's a that's a lot less compared that's to what I was downgrade. doing. That's a big downgrade. Yeah, that's a big downgrade. And that's from the only, where the only reason is because I'm losing space. I don't, I don't have that much space left. <laughs> I love it. I, <laughs> I love it. Space. How, how, how do these things show up in who you are and what you do today. So how does sneakers, music, fashion, um, how, how, do, how does all of that show up in who you are and what you do today? I think it's a presence thing. Like when people see me, they know that certain things are a staple, right? Um, especially when people know from a sneaker standpoint, like, oh, okay, what pair of sneakers you got on today? Right. To the point where I almost can't wear nothing else but Jordans. Right. Mm. I and if, I, if I do, it has to be super fire, like super exclusive, super fire. Right. Uh, it just became part of me. The, the hat. I don't really go too many places without a hat. Uh, when I do, they're like, oh, my God, I didn't even recognize you. Like I had to go shout out to Connie. We had to do uh, she had an award situation then. We found out that I got an award too, but people were like, oh, snap, I didn't recognize you without the hat. Like, that's just wow. became uh, a thing for me. So Jay's in a hat. Uh, I'm cool with it. I have no problem with that. I have no desire, hmm. like, to switch it up completely because the hats that I have are fire. I have, like, over 100 hats, so fire. Collection is strong. Collection hey, is well, strong. That's, well, so here's... Okay, so let me break down the real true reason. Because when I said I had, um, what was it? I had, when I had the ability to buy, I would. But there was a certain incident that happened where somebody uh, broke into my house, right? This happened uh, like five years ago, something like that. It, it, it wasn't super long ago, but it wasn't super recent, right? And it was a different one because it was somebody who knew me. The reason why I say it was somebody who knew me was because they took specific J's and they took all my hats and they took like my PS4 at the time. Mind you, I have all these other things because I don't know who's watching and I don't want you to come to my crib. So I have all these other things that you could have taken if you were literally here to rob the crib, right? But they took specific things. Praise God. Please, everybody, get insurance. I have insurance. So uh, some things got replaced. And, like, and guns and all this other stuff. For those of you listening, yeah, like, don't even, <laughs> don't even try it. Yeah. We got cameras. We got everything. We got, no, we, we definitely got, got we cameras got, now. We for sure yeah, have we, cameras. <laughs> um, but uh, so I said from that day, I would get... Uh, double what they've taken. And so this is why I have so much, so many hats and so many sneakers, because when somebody violated and took, I wanted to almost prove that, like, that doesn't stop nothing. Like, I could get more and probably more than what you grabbed. So that's mm. that's really what happened. Is is that a New Yorker thing or only child thing? Or is that probably just a Nikki thing? Be Probably okay. both. It's probably all yeah. three. And a Leo thing. Because it's like, mom, I, I want all, so I'm going to get all the Jordans and plus another, I don't know, 170 more. Um, you took all my hats, so I'm going to get more than, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, but but I see that I see that as a healthy competitive thing. So I'm saying, is that is that the New Yorker only child mix with the black and Puerto Rican all and the Leo remixed and, yeah, together. It's a, it's a lot. It's a lot of things that... There's a lot that, happening. Yeah, it's a lot <laughs> happening. It's so... I can't even... 
I can't even say this specific <laughs> thing is why I am this way. It is, I am, when you combined everything and you're like, wow, that, yeah, that's a Nikki. That's all you can say. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, you got, got a lot of things going case. on for you. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Let's talk about the Navy. Um, how about did that it. decision come about? Um, heh. Uh, so I was working at Virgin Mecca record store on Times Square, right? And, uh, realized that I think it was like 19, 18, 19, something around there. Right. And realized like, what was after that? What, like, what are we doing after that? And so I couldn't really think of anything. So I was like, I want to travel. And, mm -hmm. uh, for those people who know with the military, they will give you uh, a free college degree. That's how I looked at it. Right. So I said for that, let's go. Right now, mind you, I am very spontaneous. And so I didn't really think of all the details. I just go. Right. Mm. So with the Navy, they have different jobs. And if you don't know what job that you want, you have to go undesignated. Right. Which is kind of like the janitor of the Navy. So you're painting, you're cleaning, you're uh, pulling up rope in different situations to like let the, the ship go, bring it back, uh, refuel it. You're doing all the little jobs that no one else really wants to do, right? So I came in undesignated because literally when I decided I was gone probably within a week. What? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, my mom was not happy. My mom was not happy. Because I was like, when I make a decision, I make a decision. Everything that I do, when it's like, when I make a decision, I make a decision. So uh, everybody was all confused. Like, wait, wh why are you going? What's happening? But it didn't give me time to really understand how to properly set myself up in the Navy. But I don't regret it because it was a lot of things that I learned. Uh, cause and then I think it really contributes to how I am now, because with being undesignated, you have to learn everybody's job to understand which one you're going to pick. Right. So mm. it's not feeling like when you get to a certain uh, rank that you are above thou and the things like that, you're still trying to do all these other things. Like even with certain qualifications, there's like a certain pin that you can get. You still have to know everybody's job and have a, a, an understanding in order to get qualified. So I think I was designated for about like, I don't know, a year or two or something like that. And then uh, I looked at it as, okay, what was the best translating job to get that would help me outside of the Navy? Because a lot of the jobs in the Navy are only good for the Navy. They're you know, you can rank fat. There's a lot of benefits if you take it inside of the Navy, but it doesn't translate well outside. I looked at it more of a, okay, what would make me the most money outside and set me up for success? And that was being IT. And so uh, mm. that's how I got into the IT world over there. Nice. Nice. You know, we joke about you being an extroverted introvert mm -hmm. or uh, an online extrovert. But um, if you think back to that time in your life, you would say you were more what personality type at the time? Extroverted, more introvert to yourself? Like, I'd be curious. Um, I think I was still in. I think I was still the same. Like for the people. Really, like same. Yeah. Yeah. For the people that I knew. I'm super extroverted. You know what I mean? Like, we go out, we can do things, boom, boom, boom. Now, there was a time that, oh, yeah, that, like, parties were happening in my crib. That whole nine people were sleeping here. It was it was a vibe, mm. right? Um, but I'm like, yeah, come into my world. Yeah, 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 come in my world. Come, do do do, -do right? Um, but there was still many times, like, my job is in a cold room. IT is like you're isolated from everybody and you're staying in this very cold uh, server room situation and you're doing everything that you need in there while everybody else is probably dying of heat and stuff like that. I'm with a whole winter jacket the whole time. Isolated. Mm -hmm. It's only our crew. So 
um, yeah. I would still say the same. Wow, that's cool. That's cool. Looking back at all of these different jobs you've had, Nick's from, you know, working at the record store in Times Square, the Navy, IT. What are shot maybe was some of them? Oh, GameStop. Okay, yeah, here we go. Hey. Um, but but looking at all of these different different stops or just experiences in general, are there any lessons from those that you still use with you today? Like in your day to day today, are there is there anything from that that you take? Uh, I th I think just more of the the work ethic when when we think about the Navy and how I had to go about it the thing I knew is I I could not stop what I was doing until it was done right so I have a big situation of like I don't like things when they're incomplete so I learned that from from the Navy and just like being able to like complete things when you say it's completed. So from that standpoint, I, I learned that everything else. I mean, mm. maybe, you know, I don't know. Yeah, I get you. I get you. Yeah. No, I mean the Navy, you spent nine years there total, right? Yeah. Got you. Got you. What, what was, uh, what was your first introduction to storytelling and social media? Um, like what created that path? I think it was when I was in the bank and I was starting to make, uh, because after the Navy, I, I took a bank job. And when I started doing videos to where, and it wasn't even intentionally done for social media. It was just done uh, to take ET's voice and put it towards videos, right? Like put it to where it made sense, where I would enjoy looking at it. Right. Because for some reason, I didn't always enjoy looking at one individual. So I would create, uh, you know, those types of things. I would recreate music videos because I remembered uh, when music videos made sense. And so I would recreate a music video to make it make sense based off some of the footage that has been uh, there. So the storytelling really the root of it came from music videos and wanting words to make sense with our visuals. And then it just transformed into just other things. But I would, I would say the first time was definitely uh, in my office at the bank job, fooling on my, uh, my laptop. And then it hmm. started doing it at home. Yeah, I remember, I remember the first time that I noticed that you have a special taste with that i want to say it was either the pandemic or the george floyd situation mm -hmm. you did a you did a mashup mm -hmm. of just what the emotion was like yep. and and i remember just reading through the comments and then realizing like wait a second how did she capture the emotions on video or through images you know because it was like th that kind of uh edit and it was so powerful to see that things come together. So I think that was the first time it was like, oh, and the underlying almost foundation out of all of this is storytelling. Mm -hmm. You know, it, to some degree, that's it. You mentioned E.T. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the one and only. Um, talk, talk about how you met him or how were you, you know, first introduced to him. I mean, obviously there's a lot that has uh, transpired in, in all that you have made happen for him and the brand and the entire community, really. But what, where did that journey start? So it happened when, of course, like most of us, we would go on YouTube and there was this screaming guy uh, telling me what to do and all the things I was doing wrong. And I'm like, okay, who are you? Right. Uh, and I ended up binge watching his videos. That person ended up being E.T. the Hip Hop Preacher, a.k.a. Eric Thomas. Uh, and then on a certain Black Friday, I think I was on my way to, uh, what was it? I was on the bus going, I think going to New York or coming from New York. I was on the bus. I remember that for sure. And um, what was it? He had a Black Friday sale and for uh, Breathe University. 
and I clicked on it, joined Breathe University, uh, was super active in that community, realized that he had uh, events. The first event that I went to was in D.C. That was the very first brunch that they had as well. Uh, and you had to be part of Breathe You to be part of the lunch. That's when I met uh, Rochelle, who has been on the on the joint. I met a lot of people uh, that did amazing stuff right there. So went to that event, then ended up just going to all these different events. Like I drove the Honda to Miami from Virginia to Miami. Wow. Stayed like a day and drove right back. That was a 14-hour drive, right? Uh, and he went to Atlanta multiple times. And so uh, anywhere he would go, I would just be there just helping. Um, I remember uh, went to New York, got my mom in. She's like, oh, he's great. This is, you know, this is who you're helping? Yep, yep, yep absolutely. He had this great boot camp, which I never understood why he never did again. It was in Michigan. Um, and it was like a two, three day boot camp. That's when, uh, you know, David Shands, Rob Wilson, all these other people that were there. It was just like the, that's where I met Isaiah. Uh, mm. it was really dope. So after a while, uh, they were like, you know, Hey, uh, you're super active on, on in the community. Like, no one was saying anything in that community. I was the only one that was like breaking down all the videos and saying, hey, I'm watching chapter two. If you want to watch chapter two with me, come on, I'm going to go live and I'm going to drop a video saying what this was, what did I learn? And y'all let me know what y'all learned, right? So I was one mm -hmm. of the most engaging people. And then eventually they were like, hey, you want to try to take over the social media? Because I was doing some of the videos, like some of the ads here and there. But they were like, you want to take over the social media? I said, sure, why not? And so that's where it went from, you know, uh, three around 300K is when I got the account. And now it's at 2.2 million in Instagram over almost uh, 2 million on Facebook and so on. Wow. So. Wow. That's powerful. That's powerful. It's almost like. Uh, that's where some of the this Nick Yamoose podcast stuff started. Is like you were watching videos in that community, mm -hmm. breaking down what you learned. I hope y'all see the patterns here. This is what how how long ago was that? Seven, eight years ago. I could I could look it up. That uh, that was a that was definitely a minute ago. I could hold on. Let's. This let's... thing has been a long time coming. That's crazy to think about because I'm just hearing you talk and you're saying, yeah, I was watching the videos and recapping the lessons going live. Mm -hmm. You mentioned probably three or four things just in that phrase alone that are probably a core part of the brand today. You know, it's, it's crazy to 2016. 2016? Yeah. Wow. Wow. Wow, that's powerful. That's powerful. You mentioned, you mentioned, um, you know, growing the account from 300,000 to 2.2 million. Yep. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the status of social media and how, you know, content creators and brands can probably follow that same blueprint to make mm -hmm. that happen. But when I was putting together this, you know, this episode, I was really thinking about focusing on your story and the process, because I know for a fact that throughout that seven year period, you dealt with Quite a few experiences. You you dealt with some adversity. You dealt with some challenges. Yeah. But the average person would never, ever even know. Mm -hmm. I mean, you went through some things that a whole company didn't even know about. Right? right. So my question is, I think outside of one or two vacations that you've taken, I don't the know vacation? that you've... No, no. I'm just saying, like, since I'd known you... Um, outside of one or two vacations, I think you took like one or two trips for your birthday or something, Puerto Rico, mm -hmm. like very simple things. Yep. Um, you really haven't missed a day of work. And so I want to know, I want you to talk about where did that ability to be able to navigate adversity in difficult times, where did that come from and how do you manage? Um... I think because 
you know, there's there's, there's several situations like uh, being an only child and uh, I love you, mom, but having a very overprotective only uh, mother, right? Who I didn't really necessarily have a lot of friends, right? At the time. Uh, so to express what's wrong was never really common, right? So I just had to continue to do what I needed to do because I always had to deal with a lot of things on my own anyways, right? And then of course, with being in the Navy, you know, things does not stop because you have some issues going on, right? It may get you some help, but you're honestly having to go back on watch. You have to still do your job regardless, right? There has to be something really crazy going on for you to stop. There's it's very, and when I tell you, it's very rare when you are able to take anything off. Um, that's just the way it is. So I just translated that to just like real life. I, I pride myself that I separate uh, work and personal. Like it'll never really affect, my work will never be affected by my personal, right? So, uh, you know, I've gone through a divorce, I've gone through depression, um, and, you know, of course, like any other person, several uh, breakups and things like that. Uh, but the the major thing was the uh, the divorce, and you know, it it made me one like appreciate the people who did know, right? Like that saw something really going wrong, saw kind of the ups and downs where, you know, it even back then made me realize like, oh. Work people are not your friends. Like, and I'm the type of person that, you know, because of me being an only child, oh, if I talk to you more than twice, we're friends. And then, like, if we talk for a whole week, you're family. Like, this is great. Uh, and I had to learn in that standpoint, like, nah, like, you are there for a a reason, and as long as it benefits them in some way, shape, or form, like, that's why they rock with you. But in personal life, they don't really rock with you like that. Uh, when I was going through my depression, uh, the same kind of difference, right? So for me, it's more of if I allow, one, I'm always going to go ups and downs on feelings. That's I'm human. So that's never going to go away. Uh, I'm always going to have ups and downs from trauma to just financial stuff to happy stuff that I'm human. But what I won't allow it to do is mess up my reputation from a work standpoint and mess up my money. That's just things I won't because if I think I'm depressed now, good God, let it mess up my money. I am a wreck. We are done. <laughs> what are we here for? Right? Mm -hmm. Um, all why? Because I'm just dealing with certain types of emotions. No, I'm, I'm, I'm good on that. And to be honest with you, uh, I don't really find work work. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, I really enjoy what I do now. I may not enjoy all the time, the, the people I work with or things like that, but I really just enjoy what I do. It's not, I'm a, I'm a geek in real life, low key, but I'm a geek in real life. So this doesn't, this doesn't feel like work. So when you say, yo, I only know you having like a day off or whatever. And even those times I was still working, right? Because mm -hmm. there's just, it's not, it's not work for me. And some people will say, oh, that's unhealthy. You have to turn it off and things like that. Everybody deals with things their own different ways. I don't think yeah. one way is right or wrong. You're speaking on your personal experience and that's cool. Right. My personal experience, I will go crazy if I do not do something for more than a day. I will go crazy. That's me uh, because I feel almost as if, you know, I'm really doing something good in life by what I do. So there's a purpose towards it.
right? And it took a minute to figure out the purpose. So I don't want to turn off that purpose just because supposedly in society I need a rest day. It's mm -hmm. dumb. Mm -hmm. So that's real. So that is kind of why I am able to go through uh, different obstacles and it not really phase anything that I'm doing because one, I understand my purpose. And two, I just pride myself of having separate situations and I'm able to deal and give the right energy to both. Hmm. That's powerful. That's powerful. Yeah, I've always uh, I've always acknowledged that in you. It's like the one thing we know Nikki is going to do no matter what happens. I don't care if it's the summer, the winter, if it's cold, if it's hot, if it's whatever it is. She's going to show up to work. Yes. <laughs> she's going to show up to work. That's right. So, um, yeah, that's that's real. Um, I want to and, and you alluded to it a little bit when you talked about, you know, being active in the community. And then, of course, the story of taking e social media you know, up pretty much adding up over 2 million followers. And that's not to mention some of the other, you know, popular influencers that uh, some people may or may not know that you're associated with too, because I know you've helped them grow tremendously as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but I want to talk about the level up from the process of you being a creative operator to you being a creative owner, you know, establishing things like deeper than the brand building your own personal brand, starting this podcast, right? What was that? Where was, when was that time where you realized, okay, I'm good with my hands, quote unquote, in terms of being able to work and help other be people build, mm -hmm. but I'm going to build. I think it's the environment that we're in, you know, uh, shout out to my mom, you know, so the only thing I knew before was to have a job. I didn't know anything else but to have that, right? That's why it's funny. My mom will tell you, like, it's funny that I went to the Navy because I can't listen to nobody, like, mm. at all. But I was amazing in the Navy. Amazing. Um, but I understood how to play the game. I have to listen to an extent to be able to do what I need to do. And so I did that in real life. Like, I... Uh, listen to an extent until, you know, I was in a position to do what I, what I wanted to do. And so once there was a point where it was like, okay, you got to kind of have your own identity in, uh, you know, working with E, it is very, how do I put this? It is having your own is very addictive in that environment. Like you're going to want to own something and it may not necessarily mean be up front, but like you going to want to own something. And so for me, even though I'm a very big team player because of my background, super big team player, for me, I never really felt uh, accepted and felt like I had my own uh, situation, right? So what I mean by that, I didn't even think I was even, my goal was never to be on the team. That's, let's, let's state that quick. And my goal was never to be on the team. My, my goal was really just to help. But one of the main reasons why I didn't think I was going to be on the team was uh, because of my sexuality, right? So when the leader is highly Christian and, and everything like that. And everybody's highly Christian. Everybody's married for multiple years. I'm out here about to get a divorce in the beginning. You know what I mean? Like mm. it was, I'm a New Yorker. So uh, there's sometimes that I, I, I told this to somebody cause they were like, are you frugal or are you a flexor? And I was like, I'm frugal in public and I'm a flexor in private. Right. Meaning I like certain things and I shouldn't be shamed if I want to rock or wear or go here and this and that. And, uh, you know, in they have a certain kind of image. And I knew that I had to find uh, a crowd of my own to make me feel accepted. Right. Mm -hmm. So it was important for me to find a certain kind of lane just so I didn't feel like an outsider, but also 
it was the people who really was like, yo, we want to learn more from you. We want to hear more from you. Like, how did you do this? How did you do that? Like, yo, where's this, then, and third? Like, to the point where uh, my my old dog, Spazzy, they were like, yo, where's Spazzy? Like, they just wanted to know more about me. And mm. so with understanding working with, with E, the importance of content, and, you know, seeing the game and, and how it was shifting, I was like, okay, let me just create content the way that I can. At the time, it was going live. I couldn't necessarily be consistent with the post because, um, because of all the stuff that I was doing and trying to figure out a cadence with that. But there was one thing I could stay very consistent on, which was the lives. I can turn on, hit record, well, turn live, and then just talk to the people. And so I did that for um, from Monday to Friday for years. And then, you know, we're, we're looking at then creating other multiple pieces of content, the podcast, the, all these different things. And, you know, but then going into the business side, which in in my head and, and most people are hard at them, uh, hard on themselves where I'm like, I can't even still figure out the business side. Right. When everybody asks, like, oh, well, if you did this for E, can you do this for me? So you assume, all right, let's do services. And when I realize in real life, I don't want to do that for everybody. So where in the beginning it was called Beast Mode, Beast Mode Digital, and I still have that LLC. But uh, when first it was called that, it was solely for services. Right. And then I started to have trust issues with the people I was working with and then realizing that I'm not here to serve everybody. And that's in that frame. Right. I'm here to serve everybody as far as guiding them uh, with community, guiding them with how they're supposed to go through things. I'm not always supposed to do it for them. Right. Because I think I could hit more of the masses by guiding them through it. So made the switch with from deeper than the brand all because of trademark issues. So people get get your stuff trademarked. It's just very quick listen. Please get your stuff trademarked. So we changed the name to deeper than the brand, and then it started to be more of a community uh, educational vibe that's now transforming into other things. But that's in in the whole mix of things. That's just because at the end of the day. I just wanted my own true identity and to have a voice where I felt like I never really had a voice before and understanding that just because of uh, like your background and kind of like your religion, your sexuality and everything like that, that shouldn't stop you from really truly doing your own purpose regardless of who you may be looking up to those people who are around you it's like I had to figure out that I was really here for a specific audience and I'm just taking all these different lessons to be able to serve them right wow wow that was um that's powerful that's powerful that's real. That's real. Um, I don't know that people knew the full version of that because, you know, I, I, I knew parts of it, mm -hmm. but that, in tr that, that the way it transpired to be what it is now, it's like, what, what motivated that? So it kind of makes sense for you to see that. Um, let's talk to creative entrepreneurs a little bit and maybe other sure. brands and content creators. Um, you pretty much laid out and, and you've scattered it throughout, like, those who are listening carefully will catch up on some of the keys of finding pockets to be consistent, content being at a part of the ingredient because that's a part of the blueprint. Like you've, you gave a, 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 a couple of a few, you gave like a couple of a few things all throughout. But, you know, for the creative entrepreneur who is looking to do a similar kind of level up to the one you did going from a service provider, an operator, like you're doing things for other people mm -hmm. to making that jump. And, and and really having something that you stand for, that you control. 
What, what advice would you give to that person? Maybe give them like three things, three things that a creative entrepreneur should think about if they want to grow and have their own thing. Um, one, the team that you have, right? And I mean, it could be you at in the beginning. You still have to think about you, meaning who are you? What type of work ethic do you have? What type of dedication and commitment does you or your team have, right? Your scalability is nothing without a team, right? And nothing without a team that is committed, hungry, and dedicated, right? I realize, and I, I just said this to Carl, like at this point of my life, I will go for a, a hungry person or a dedicated person over uh, amazing skills. You know, mm. I, I, I know your accolades. So, you know, I, I, I got to get you. Like, I'm not, I'm not here for that kind of talent. I'm here for like, yo, it may not be perfect, but your presence is there. It may not be all the way together, but you're willing to stay up and fix it. Right. So to be able to scale, it has everything to do about your team. And, and for those people who are a team of one, like, are you even dedicated? Like, are you even committed? Do you even have that hunger? Because if you don't necessarily have that and you're only looking for other people to delegate or systems and AI to do everything for you, you know, um, then you're going to attract the same people. Right. And it's not really going to scale. So team is team is one. Uh, purpose is two. Right. If you don't know the purpose of your brand, the purpose of your business, the purpose of the creativity is not going to go any further. Right. I, I use this example. I think we, we talked about it on the live where when we're talking about scalability and I was talking about scalability from a social media presence. But I'm talking about the scalability in general, where we're, we have three phases of uh, brand confusion, self-doubt, and brand purpose, right? And so when we, have, uh, when we have brand confusion, this is when, from a social media standpoint, we're posting everything and, and with no true direction. When we're talking about just uh, figuring out our brand, and figuring out our, our business side of things. This is where we're throwing up different products, services, right? Just because everybody else is doing it. We have this random website. We don't even know what it does, how the traffic gets into it. We don't, we're not really sure because there's still a lot of brand confusion. The second one is self-doubt, where we may have an understanding now. We may have an understanding of who our audience is, that whole nine but we don't believe that we can do it because of comparison, because of overthinking, that whole nine. And then we have brand purpose where we know who we're speaking to. We know what we're here for. We know what our solution is. You know, we know the creativity level and our creativity creates income. And so we know why we are here. And so now everything that we're doing, it, it scales it. It's not maybe because or anything like that, everything that we're doing is in order to grow, whether grow from an impact standpoint or whether grow from a, a income standpoint. But it, it is on, it's on point and it is very clear and clarity is never a problem when we have brand purpose. So uh, that would be two, even though that's really three and two, right? Um, and then I would say probably the last one to scale, which kind of goes in something that I already said, is really just fighting self-doubt every day. That is an everyday thing, especially for a creative. We will forever look at other people's stuff because everything is so easy to access through our phones and through our laptops. And so it's hard not to compare. It's hard not to look at maybe the age that you're in, the how many years you've been doing it, maybe even months, like, but you really putting in your all to it and seeing if, yo, is this good enough? 
you know, should I charge this much? I don't, I don't even know. Like, you know, I shout out to, to my girl. We were just talking about this and like the, the self doubt of, of pricing ourselves, you know, me and her have the best interest for each other. So we would go, uh, like if I have a question about, okay, should I charge this? She'll tell me and vice versa. Why? Because there's self-doubt amongst ourselves about certain topics. And that's perfectly fine. It is being in front of the self-doubt that's going to help you scale. And when mm. you do those three things, you're pretty much in a really good position, from my opinion. Wow. Wow. That's powerful. That's powerful. It's crazy because sometimes, you know, I've... I, not that you forget that somebody's human, but you're like, yeah, there's no way Nikki struggles with self-doubt. Yeah. You know, like it just that that thought sometimes completely disappears. But um, where, 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 where does, uh, you know, now that we're in this blueprint phase, but um, I'm noticing, of course, I, I want to get your thoughts or predictions on the state of social media, mm -hmm. the state of the podcasting industry and the scale of A.I., so like, let's just kind of do like three mini questions in one, but just okay. take it how I was you go. Like, that's, that's a yeah, yeah, loaded no, no, just, question. Just, that's just to, three just different to set industries. You up. Yeah, yeah, no, just to set you up. But, you know, um, kind of from where you see it now, mm -hmm. what's, what's the future of social media? We know verification, we know paid to be on the platforms, a lot of different things. What's, what, what do you see is, is the future? Uh, I see social media not being free as much as we think anymore. I think those days are over, right? With things as such as you said, as like Meta Verified and Twitter Blue. I do believe that for us to really see success on social media is going to be a pay to play situation. There's going to be some perks of organic content, uh, but after you uh, pay the toll, I'll say it like that, right? It's not that you will continuously have to pay the toll. I mean, like an everyday thing, every month thing. But uh, once you pay to get in, right? Then, you know, it's about the strategy that you have amongst your organic content. So I do believe that we will not see a, a free a completely free situation for a little bit, unless it's a super brand new, uh, brand new social media platform. But if we think between the past five years, the only successful social media platform that's come out of anything is TikTok. We've had multiple social medias come and go, but the only true successful one that has been there is TikTok. And the reason for that is because they created a need for a full immersive experience on our phones, which is vertical videos, right? Now, I do see that there is going to be a balance between short form and long form videos. I think where we are is that people want to be introduced to you, but then want to get to know more about you. So even for from my brand, I'm starting to think about, okay, what is the long form uh, videos to these little short ones that I'm doing about AI, about social media updates, right? So how am I being intentional with uh, creating long form stuff as well as directing it back uh, certain parts to the podcast to where, uh, you know, we may have like an AI tool of the week situation, Um to kind of like always direct people to long form. So you want to kind of think from a social media standpoint, like what platforms will allow me to do both? What platforms maybe that I can cross promote to have the best uh, way to get brand awareness, but as well down the line monetization. So that's kind of where I see with, with social media, where there will be a more of a balance past couple of years. It's been very vertical and very short form because TikTok has been killing it. But I think now we're with TikTok now allowing, I think, up to 10 minutes to videos, um, you know, 
YouTube doing short, short form and long form. It, it is a need to understand both and understand how to balance that for your brand. So I'll say that from a social media standpoint. What was the other one? I love it. Podcasting. Podcasting. Um, I believe it is in a phase where... So going back to people wanting to have long form content for you. So podcast is a perfect way to do that for the simple fact that it creates long form video and audio. So we will never miss anything that you're doing because if we're on the go, we could put on the audio version of it. If we love you so much on video, I can go to YouTube and, and check you out there. Right. So once again, it's, podcasting is one of those deeper connections. Now with YouTube embracing podcasting with allowing you to turn any playlist into a podcast and being able to not only give you separate analytics from, uh, from a video standpoint, but also allowing you to be on their YouTube music app. I think podcasting is, is still very important in the game. We remember covering on the podcast when Netflix is going to do a podcasting department. Still no word on that. Spotify is constantly making different changes for uh, podcasters. I think my only, my only wish, if we are on these streaming platforms like Spotify, like iHeart, and, and and things like that, why are we not getting paid for the streams? So these are hour long sometimes. And this is figuring out how to monetize a podcast is extremely hard for some. Because of one, the discoverability is kind of trash, to be honest with you. So this is why uh, YouTube did what they did to try to improve podcasting discoverability uh but you know to people are still trying to figure out new ways to monetize podcasting where you have sponsorships you have memberships you have your own products and services you have touring you have merch right you have the typical ways of monetizing but you have to now look at it as what is next? What is another way to monetize? What is not being seen that maybe other industries are been doing when it comes to music, when it comes to movies, when it comes, like we have to look at these different industries that do have content and are monetizing content in all different ways. How can the podcast game become more like that? So I think for, for me, I think YouTube is pushing it in a very good way. There's not so many new shows as there was before because in the pandemic, there was a, a crazy amount of new podcasts. We're one of them, but not many stayed that way. Not many survived after the podcast and there wasn't true increase of shows because people got busy. And then, of course, the discoverability is podcast numbers isn't like social media numbers. Like you can't just put a hashtag, a, a, a trending sound, you know, a reply to the right person and then it goes, right? That's not what happens. So until podcasting discoverability could get really better, uh, it's, I'm, I'm just trying to see where the podcast world is going to go. But it, from a, rollout standpoint, when you have a, a book or a course or a movie or a project, we're not going to radios no more. We're going on podcasts. And so True. that they've replaced, I would say they would replace uh, radio because even radio shows are turning into podcasts. Man. Yeah, that's real. I'm noticing... Um... Michael B. Jordan going doing a podcast run to announce 
Creed three that that tells you something. So that's yeah. real. Um, what about what about the future and the scale of AI? I mean, I know it's it's still relatively early, but you've been really a a, a very important voice as it relates to how AI can be utilized for content mm-hmm. and the use in social media. What what are you focusing on now and what maybe the next let's say thirty days? Just because I feel like things move so fast in the space. Yeah, I think uh, what was crazy. Uh, shout out to Jose and actually a lot of people send me these things where uh, your favorite artists are being cloned and playing some of your favorite songs. Rihanna was singing uh, Beyonce and. Uh, and they made a new Juice World. Rest in peace to Juice World. Uh, they did a Jay Z verse. Like AI is moving very quickly, very very quickly to the point where Universal, from a music standpoint, is is saying stop on playing them on streaming platforms. You cannot play any kind of AI stuff at all. We are in an interesting time because everything is so new. And so there's really no, you know, regulations or or standards Mm -hmm. of what can and can happen. So I think very optimistic about it of, oh, okay, if they're going to allow us to clone our voice, let's clone our voice and and make content in a more effective way. They're allowing us to take a picture and turn that into a video, get that clone voice that I have and put it together. And now I don't have to create content. I just got to type what it needs to say, maybe change the background. I'm going to do that. They are now starting to do text to video. First, it was text to picture and text to audio. Now we're doing uh, text to video with a runway. So everything with AI is moving very, very quickly. And I think as people with brands, people with businesses, we have to just stay ahead of everything that is going on and finding those tools that is going to keep us relevant. We look at, you know, when factories, like when the machines were starting to really kick up and a lot of people got laid off because you didn't know how to push the button. Right. Not that you weren't skilled enough. We didn't need you. You didn't know how to push the button. And so with AI, this is going to allow you to push the button. Prompt engineers, people who know how to write the right prompt, are getting paid over 300 K. If you know how to integrate AI into a business, you are super valuable. You can be able to write your own check. From you just being a, a entrepreneur or aspiring entrepreneur or uh, an, a nine to five who still wants to just do their brand, what is going to create an effective system that you are able to press the button and you are able to get all your content ideas, all your content created in a matter of of minutes compared to what you were doing before, having brand proposals and, 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 uh, you know, emails and all these different things done in a matter of minutes, sent out in a matter of minutes, slide decks done in a matter of minutes. These are all things that are going to give us our time back. And when we have our time back, then we're able to think of things that are going to make us more money. So I'm not scared of AI. I'm actually very excited about AI. And I believe the future of AI is going to get stronger thing right now. It's not where it can replace uh, people, but at some point it's going to be better than people. Why? Because our brain cells are not always as strong as, as we get older, you know? So what we thought we knew sometimes we don't, but AI does, this is going to be our second brain. This is going to be, our right hand. This is going to be uh, the future CEO to some, to some people. So I truly appreciate where AI is going and 
all the different ones that are coming out. Some are good, some are bad. I tried one uh, called Autopod, where supposedly it is supposed to edit your whole podcast from like the three different uh, camera angles that we have. It's supposed to like automatically chop it from when somebody is talking, then it shows the wide angle, then it shows Moose, then it shows me. Like it didn't really work out, but it's the thought that that's what they're working on, you know, that to where it's going to give us our time back of something that would normally take three, four Mm. hours to do. Yeah. Yeah. So that's definitely, definitely the most exciting part of it all is definitely like you mentioned the time piece I'm seeing huge, huge time uh, decrease in, in time on task overall, which is, uh, which is awesome. Listen, man. Um, I have so many more questions that I still want to ask. Um, I'm definitely going to save some of these for the after show. So if you're not subscribed to the after show, make sure you go ahead and check us out on the after show. You know, you could go get, I mean, come on, it's Nikki. If you're going to talk social media content, branding, anything related to that, you could talk to her for hours about this stuff. And it's probably hours of content, Mm -hmm. tens, maybe even hundreds of hours of content out there now about her talking about that. But her story, her process, the way she became who she is, I don't know that that story was out. So I hope that this gave you just a small, because I don't even think this is the full version yet. Um, but I hope that this gave you a full, a small inside peek into, you know, uh, uh, the, the making and the becoming of, of the one and only Nick's. So Nick's two more questions for you, man. Um, you know, we always close out with at least one of the the final questions. I got two questions, but one Mm -hmm. of the, one of the things we always ask is, uh, like, what's next? What's the future having in store for you? I know you're not a big planning person, but I know you're a visionary. Yes. So, uh. What's the future like? What's the future like um, for you personally, I should say? Building a stronger personal brand where when it comes to AI content and social media updates and personal branding, my name continues to ring bells to some of the favorite influencers out there, but then just to just more people who need it. I'm not going to say to everybody, but just the more people who need it, right? To continue to grow deeper than the brand, not only to more of just a community of people who are really trying to grow their social media presence, their community and their digital wealth, but more of a staple of when you think of, you know, content, you think of deeper than the brand, right? Mm. When you think of the next influencer, you think of deeper than the brand, right? So from from that and really what's next is just true happiness. Mm. Come true on. happiness. No, Come on. N- not, not necessarily no stress, but really focusing on not doing things that don't make me happy. I love that. I love that. Final question before we close. Yeah. Um, three favorite or your top three Nipsey songs. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So. They're going to make you. Okay. I'm the, I was not expecting that. I had the book list and everything. Okay. That yeah. was good. So I'm going I would different say direction. Loaded Basis is one of my favorites. Uh, Ocean Views. And um, I think it's called Don't Stress. Let me make sure. Let me make sure real quick, fast, in a hurry. I do believe it's Don't Stress. Yep, I don't, should be our I don't outro. stress. I love it. Mm-hmm. I love it. I love it. Yeah, I know, I know Nip was a, you know, a huge uh, impact on just what you've done in the branding space. So I was like, yeah, we could talk about the books, but we could talk about that another time. Let's talk about some of these some of these records that I know have, have created some level of impact, but oh, yeah. no, nah, I, 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 um, uh, I appreciate you, you know, being open to this, man. I know when you, I was hesitant when you asked me to do it and I was like, ah, well, she's got to do it too. Let's see if she's going to be open. So I appreciate you trusting me with, you know, the opportunity to have this dialogue and ask these questions. You already know where I stand with you, man. Appreciate everything that you do. And, 
who you are more, first and foremost, above all of the, the, the stuff that, you know, people benefit from on the outside, including myself, that's cool. But I think you're, you're a true, genuine person and that matters most. So you do, uh, you do deserve all the flowers in the world. Um, hit him with the final words before we close up out of here though. Okay. Uh, final words before, uh, make one, make sure, uh, you listen to creator Av that drops every Friday at 6 AM start there and then follow Nikki and Moose at Nikki and Moose and everywhere. But final words, uh, stop doubting your creativity because your creativity, uh, creates income. So it's all about you and you were given creativity for a reason. Use it. 